Yo, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to another episode of Kicking the Rats TV. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, also hit the like button. If you guys have been enjoying the content, and share this video with a friend. If you guys wanna get somebody new into fishing, I really appreciate it. I love seeing people get into the outdoors and start fishing. But today, we got a tip video for y'all. It's been a long time since we filmed one. Everybody's been asking about it. I don't know really what happened. I haven't filmed one in months. And I'm like, today is the day. Now, let me tell you why. So last night, we had a full moon. Not only did we have a full moon, but we also had a big cold front blow in. We're here in December. We've had really hot days this last week. And out of the blue, we just had this cold front just smack us in the face. The fishing is going to be very tough today. But I'm going to show you guys how to catch five times more bass when pond fishing even if you're on a lake, even if you're on a river, pretty much wherever you go, you can use this bait, you can use this rig, you can use this technique to catch more fish. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So guys, I went by Dick's Sporting Goods this morning. I need to grab a few things. We're gonna be talking about it right now. But before we hop into that, let's talk about the combo that we're using and what we're rocking with today. I actually got the new Kicking Their Bass TV X lose combo right here this is the spinning rod if you guys want to check them out they're only available on kickingtheirbass.com i'll leave the link down below we got right hand bait casters left hand and also spinning combos we have this paired up with 30 pound braid it's very slick it comes off the reel really smooth and you can get that good long cast i actually went by dicks and got some of this 10 pound floor right here we're going to be using this as leader line because at the end of the day we don't want to be tying our bait directly to braid. So yeah, we're going to be putting some of this leader line on, which is 10 pound. So I'm going to do that real quick. And you know what I always forget? Scissors, but guess what, boy? I'm rocking a pocket knife. See that, man? You got scissors, okay. <laughs> Never mind, I thought I was being... Uh, Wait, let me see that pocket knife. I thought knife. I was being cool there, dude carry a pocket knife you want to see it yeah that's your new everyday carry yeah dude it's my everyday carry you know never know when you're out here in these streets <laughs> <laughs> out here in these fishing streets when you, when you out here at these ponds you never know bro <laughs> keep that thing on you gotta keep that strap on <laughs> um no but seriously uh we always forget the pliers we always forget the scissors so like I'm gonna start trying to keep a pocket knife on me at all times, just in case, you never know. Like we pulled up to the pond this morning and we forgot the GoPro batteries. It's always something, ain't it Cody? We always like, we always forget something. So maybe the pocket knife will come in handy here one day. Yeah. Um, but I'm tying on this leader right now. Um, the knot that I'm tying on is a uni to uni knot. I'm not gonna explain it here in this video. I'm sure you can go look it up here on YouTube. I actually might have a video on my channel about it. I'm not exactly sure on that. If not, then I might end up making this video. But I tied the uni to uni knot on all my spinning tackle when I'm running from braid to fluoro. I know a lot of people tie a couple different knots. The uni to uni has just kind of been my core knot um, for tying braid and fluoro together. Cinch her down. So you got the two knots. You got that braided one right there. Then you have that floor one. So what's going to happen are these knots are going to cinch down to each other. Boom. Pretty flush like that. There's a lot of other knots you can tie to where it's not going to be as bulky as that knot right there. But the uni to uni hasn't let me down yet. So I'm still tying that. I do try to cut the tag in fairly short because the last thing you want is all that going through your eyelids. I don't want to cut it too short though because once I catch a fish or I have some constant pressure on this, it will cinch down the knot a little tighter. So I'm not wanting to go too close with it, but at the same time, I'm not I'm not trying to uh, leave a big tag in on that. As far as the leader line goes, you know, you can go with a short leader. I'm talking a couple foot if you don't want this thing going through your eyelids. That's probably what I'm going to do today. I'm probably going to give myself three and a half foot if we end up breaking off. I'll tie on a new leader, it's not a problem. So that is what we're rocking with, right there. Got our braid, floral leader. Everybody else has a personal preference. Some people might wanna put a 10 foot leader on. Today, I'm running small with it. 
All right, so the bait that we're gonna be talking about today, it's a very finesse bait. Like I said, full moon last night. What happens when there's a full moon, the fish tend to feed at night. Okay, with that being said, if you come out here early in the morning, most of the time they're fat and full. You know, after a big old breakfast at Waffle House, you don't wanna go to McDonald's afterwards. And I think the bass think the same way. So they're gonna be a little more slower. They're not gonna be as active. I'm gonna to wanna to put this bait in front of his nose. With that being said, this is one of the most finesse baits out there. I've caught so many dang fish on it and a lot of people don't use this bait. So I want you guys to go try this after this video. Tag me on Instagram. Show me some pictures of you guys catching fish on this because this is a fish catching machine that in my opinion is very underrated and it has to be the drop shot. So I got some stuff at Dick Sporting Goods to make a drop shot. We got some regular circle hooks right here. These are one eye. Let me show you one in my hand boom it's a little circle hook the drop shot that we're going to be rigging up today is weedless you can go weedless with it today we're not there's not a ton of cover in this pond i don't think we need that and the one other thing i got was some weights and i have two different types of weights i got these long weights right here and i got some of these circle weights right here and you're going to use either one of these weights depending on where you're fishing and what you are fishing so if i'm vertic if i'm on my bass boat i'm on a deep lake i'm reading my graph i'm vertically dropping down on fish i would go with these cylinder weights right here one the cylinder weight is going to go cut through the water a lot easier because of how it's shaped and two if i'm vertically dropping i'm more than likely dropping down in some cover probably a brush pile this is going to get through that a lot easier if I'm using one of these circle weights, I like using these in ponds personally. You can also throw these on rock. It's gonna go through rock a lot better. I'm more gonna use these in ponds. You can use either one, but these are gonna be great, you know, in ponds in my opinion. And also if you're like throwing on some rock, I think it's a lot better. You know, if you're throwing that little cylinder weight, it's gonna get stuck in those little cracks of the rock. And the last thing you want is to, is to break off a ton. So that's what we're using. We're gonna be rocking this weight right here on that little circle hook. And then I'll show you guys what bait we're gonna be using. But when it comes to tying the drop shot on, there's a couple little factors that are very important. So we got our circle hook right here. We got our line right here. We are going to want the point of the hook facing up when I put my line through, right? Just like that. So when tying a drop shot, you want a very long tag in. With that being said, I'm gonna leave a lot of fluoro at the end right here when tying this. I'm gonna tie a standard uni knot. That's just personal preference. You can tie whatever knot you'd like. But you see how long my tagging is, watch this. Very long. I'm gonna loop that about six times. And there's my knot right here. So I'm going to center down, and then this is the most important part. Boom. I got her cinched down. So as you can tell, I got my hook on my line right here, and I got this access right here on the tag end. Okay? Perfect length, to be honest with you. We're going to be talking about that here in a moment. But I want you to notice something with this hook. You see how it's sitting sideways? You don't want that, because when you're fishing a drop shot, whether you're casting it out, or you're vertically dropping on fish. Either way, you want this hook facing up. You don't want that hook facing sideways. So this is the most important part to this video, and I need you guys to pay attention here. I'm gonna take this tag in right here, and this is very, very important, guys. I'm gonna go back through the eyelid, okay? So I have my hook right here facing up. I'm gonna put this line literally back through the eyelid. Nothing crazy, no knots or anything. You just put it through the eyelid. I want you to watch what this is gonna do. Boom, look at that. Instead of that hook sitting sideways, it is positioned straight up. So when you go to lift and hook set these fish, that hook is gonna penetrate right in the top of his mouth. So that, that's so important guys, because when you're drop shot and you're not trying to go Jack, like just way lay into a fish like a big jig you're really just trying to reel up into them and, and keep that constant pressure to penetrate that hook with that hook setting up 
I promise you that right there, this single step is gonna help you catch a lot more fish. If you didn't put that line through, I promise you, you'd be losing a lot of fish and you'd be angry at me. So I'm glad we got to talk about that. It's a very important step. Um, now, lastly, we're gonna take our weight and we're gonna, tie, we're gonna tie it on to the bottom here. I don't like to do a crazy knot. I usually just do an overhand knot about three times. One, two, three, boom. We got our hook right there. We got about 12 inches of line and then we have our weight here on the bottom. The reason I didn't tie this with a strong uni knot or a polymer knot is because if this weight gets stuck down in something, I can still break off and possibly only break off the weight and still have my hook. And a lot of y'all are probably asking, Noah, why did you only leave a 12 inch gap right here between the hook and the weight? When I fish ponds, I tend to go between 12 to 15 inches on my uh, tag end side of my drop shot. If I'm fishing very clear water, you can go all the way up to two and a half foot. Depends on water visibility. Today we're in a pond. It's not too murky, but it's not too clear at the same time. I think 12 inches of line is gonna be perfect for that. So now let's go ahead and talk about the baits that we're gonna be putting on. All right, so we got a couple different finesse worms with us today. Um, I got a dirty water color. This is actually gooseberry, very similar to a June bug. I'll show you this real quick and then we're gonna hop into it. Part doesn't really matter too much but you just need to know the basics of the colors if i was fishing dirty water i'm going to throw more of a black or a purple like a june bug black and blue or even like a gooseberry type of worm this water is slightly stained so i'm probably going to be going with this today i've also caught a ton of big fish putting this on a drop shot the other worm that i got is actually a green pumpkin finesse worm right there that's going to be good for more of your natural water your natural colors you can also throw this in dirty water too. There's no rules to fishing guys. Uh, I think they'll bite just about anything for the most part, as long as you're working it the right way and you're presenting it in the right manner. But uh, yeah, that's what we're going with. I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm rigging this. Since this is just a circle hook, we're gonna nose hook this bait. We're not doing it weedless. So all I'm gonna do, got the front of the worm, got the hook. I'm gonna go about half an inch up, uh, down that worm right there and just nose hook it. As simple as that. You can go a couple different routes. Even if you wanted to do it weedless with this circle hook, you can still do so by hooking it in the same spot and bringing it out the front like that. You still have your point, which you can bury that. But that's another way of working the circle hook, but also running it weedless. But for today's video, we're gonna go half an inch up and leave the hook exposed. There's not a ton of cover in here. And I think that's gonna be the trick. So let's go ahead and get out to the pond, talk about how we're gonna be working this bait, how we're gonna target these fish and put some fish on the bank in these very tough conditions. So we just made it out to the pond, got our old kick in their bass combo, got our little drop shot rig. Now let's talk about what we're doing. You can do this any time of year. You can do this in the spring, you can do it in the summer, you can do it in the fall, and you best bet you can do it in the winter. And that's what we're doing today. So with today's conditions being really tough, more importantly with us coming into this winter time, these fish in these ponds tend to stack up in the deepest part. So we got this little pond out here and you got this bend and you got on the banks that's very shallow, but it gradually drops. So right in the middle here is creating a little ditch. That's where those bass are gonna be sitting. So looking right out here in this pond, you got this little lane, as you can tell it's really shallow, but you can tell it slightly drops off. Right here in the middle is where it's gonna create that little tiny ditch, which is not deep out here, but on the banks is two and three foot. In the middle, it's about six. So with that being said, right here is gonna be a good, good zone right here. In my opinion, this corner is gonna be even better because you've got a bend. So you have the center where the deep water's at. You got a bend right here in the middle. So that's exactly where we're gonna throw. Right there, right in the middle on that bend. Make sure our drag set pretty loose. We're gonna throw that drop shot down there. There's a couple different ways to work this thing. We can throw it on the bottom and drag this, drag this bait, just like this. Very simple, right? Or we can throw this bait out there and just kind of give it some little pops, just like this. Slight little movement, nothing much. 
I mean, you're, you're really trying to work this bait slow. That's, that's the key. And the cool thing about the drop shot, you got the weight on the bottom and the bait that's high. So if you put pressure on your line, so there's no slack in your line, you're lifting that worm up. And then when you let your slack go down, that worm's dropping. That's another great way of working this. So there's a bunch, I could go into all the different ways to work this drop shot. I got a couple different videos on it. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on how to target these fish and how to work this thing slow to get them to bite. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's kind of pick this center section out and see if we can get a few bites. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's small. That bite was so soft and I wasn't even moving this drop shot. He's not a big fish by any means. But he is a start today. And we got our first fish on the old drop shot. Tiny dude. That bite was so soft, man. These fish are... I saw your line going to the left. He was just <laughs> swimming with it. When he goes from 80, 80 degrees a day ago to 35, yeah. I mean, dude, it's... And I'd say on the 80 degree days, it was like 75 at this time, but that's a 40 degree drop, dude. There we go, guys. We got our first fish. Got the monkey off our back. Let's see if we can get us another one. That time I was working it really slow. That might be the trick. We got to really slow down right now to get these bites. I think we're going to figure them out here in a minute. It's going to be like back to back. Yep. That's a better one. Not a big one, but it's a better one. He's in the same spot as that fish. So another learning point right there, guys. That's why I love going fishing. I love getting out, trying new things. I've drop shotted a ton over the last 10 years, but it's not something that I do every day. But, you know, not a big fish. He's a little better than that last one. But I'll tell you, he was in the same spot and that tells us something, especially in these cold months out of the year, those fish tend to stack up. We're gonna keep on throwing out there and see if there's some more, but nice little bass. Two fish, that was pretty quick. Can we make it three? Is this the money hole that we've been looking for? I'd say, we, what, what do we do, Cody? Hunt around for about 30 minutes? Yeah, if that. If, if that, maybe 20 minutes? Yeah. And we were talking about it. It's like, you gotta find that spot where they're stacked up and boom, two fish back to back. If we can get three, that's gonna really prove that concept, especially this time of year. Working it really slow and they barely pick it up. It's kind of just a little, just a little, you know? You know what I'm saying? You know what that feels like? Yeah. Wait, I'm not sure. Just a little, Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just had to, you know. Yeah, I wasn't sure at yeah. first. There we go. That fish is a little better. You're running with me. Uh-oh. What we got? Oh, nice little bass. Yeah. These fish are not big, but... I'm gonna tell you when you're when you're out here freezing your butt off and you catch any type of fish, it's just fun, man. It's just fun. We move spots right there and then boom. We're finally on to something. Couldn't get a bite for a second there, but now we're catching some. All right, that's our third fish. This is probably the chunkiest one so far. That huh? one looked fun. Yeah, yeah, he, he actually, funny. he put up a little fight. Those other ones just kind of let me reel them in. I want y'all to pay attention to something too. When I'm hook setting on this drop shot, I'm not waylaying. I'm not I'm not hook setting, you know what I mean? I'm just lifting up. It's the only time you're not waylaying. <laughs> I know. It kills me, but I love it at the same time. That's the one thing about catching these small bass on the drop shot is your line just like twirls up and gets all tangled up. But <laughs> man, we uh, we still got on a few and the toughest day to fish out of this year in our location with the big weather change, full moon. And I am satisfied that we were able to catch four fish that quick, not big at all, but we did catch something on this tough day. It was very tough conditions. I want to end this video off guys. I don't want to keep it too long. The main purpose of this one wasn't to come catch fish. It was just to teach you guys a way to catch more fish 
next time you're out on the water. The next time you guys have some tough conditions like this, tie you on a drop shot, go out and try it. Tag me on Instagram, comment down below. Let me know what tip videos you guys want to see next. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this one. I love you so much, and I'll catch you on the next video.